democracy is a process that only works if it is embedded in people's culture and routine. In this video, we will explain what democracy is and further discuss the various types of democracy available. We will also list the various principles of democracy. Welcome back to Public Administration 101. Proudly brought to you by Kano Consultants. For professional advice, you can trust. As indicated, in this video, we will discuss what democracy is and the various types of democracy, as well as the various principles of democracy. Now, let us get into today's video. So, what is democracy? The term democracy comes from the Greek words demos, meaning people, and kratin, meaning to rule. Therefore, democracy is simply a system of government in which citizens exercise their power directly and have the right to elect government representatives who collectively form a governing body for the entire nation, like a parliament or a house of representatives. Essentially, Democracy is a type of government where citizens elect people to represent them and their needs in Parliament or in the House of Representatives or a Senate or on a Municipal Council. This is done through regular and universal elections. That is why democracy is often referred to as government of the people, by the people, for the people. In a democratic government, people have certain basic rights that the government cannot take away from them and these rights are internationally recognized and guaranteed through legislation. A few elected people, usually referred to as representatives, are empowered with the authority to make decisions that people must obey. Elected representatives are in turn expected not to abuse their authority for their own benefit. Democracy is based on a number of principles. In this next section, we will list some of the principles which form the cornerstone of democracy. And they are Citizen participation Equality and inclusiveness for everyone Accountability from elected officials Consent of the governed Freedom from unwarranted governmental interference and deprivation As well as, transparency from the government. Other principles of a democratic system are as follows. A multi-party system political tolerance, free and fair elections, acceptance of election results, and control over the abuse of power. Principles of democracy also include certain rights. For example, Bill of Rights, which are constitutionally enshrined, including human rights, the right to life and liberty, rights of minority groups, voting rights, as well as, property rights, to list just a few. Lastly, democratic systems are also based on the following principles. Freedom of the economy, freedom of assembly, freedom of association, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, including freedom of the press, as well as, an independent justice system. And finally and most importantly, the rule of law. There are a number of types of democracy being practiced around the world. Most academics usually categorize democracy under only two types, which are direct democracy and representative democracy. However, some governments around the world offer their own unique perspective on democracy, resulting in different democratic constructs of government. In the following section, we will discuss some of these types of democracy which exist around the world. But before we do that, please make sure that you check out our other videos on public administration under this channel. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content. You can also support the channel by joining our exclusive channel membership community by clicking on the join button below. When you join, you get a number of exclusive benefits, such as early access to our videos, as well as our uploading schedule. You can also suggest new topics we should cover for future videos and exclusively chat to our creators. 
Now, back to today's video. The first type of democracy we will discuss is direct democracy. Direct democracy is when citizens vote for a policy directly, without any intermediate representatives, including a council member, a house representatives, or even a member of parliament. When the government has to pass a particular law, or decide on a public policy, it goes to the people, who then vote on that issue. Thereby deciding the fate, of such a law, or policy. Under direct democracy, people can even raise issues themselves, as long as, they have a substantive consensus, on such issues. Furthermore, with direct democracy, even taxes cannot be raised, without public support. The next type of democracy we will discuss, is representative democracy. Representative democracy, otherwise known as indirect democracy, is when people are afforded an opportunity to vote for a person, who will represent them in Parliament, or in the House of Representatives, or in the Senate, or even in the Municipal Council. This is the most common form of democracy, found across the world. This small group of politicians, are supposed to represent, the needs and thoughts of the people, that voted them in. The next type of democracy, is presidential democracy. In a presidential democracy, the president of a state has significant power over the government. He or she is elected either directly or indirectly, by the citizens of the state. The president and the executive branch of government, are not indebted to the legislature, but cannot fully dismiss the legislature, under normal circumstances. Likewise, the legislature also cannot remove the president from office, except in an extreme case. The president also has the power to veto a law, to prevent its passage. However, if lawmakers can muster enough votes, they can override the president's veto. In a presidential democracy, the head of state is also the head of government. Countries like the United States, Argentina, and Sudan use this type of democracy. A democracy that gives more power to the legislature, is called a parliamentary democracy. The executive receives its democratic legitimacy only from the legislature, that is, the parliament. The elected legislature, usually represented by the parliament, elects the head of the state, such as a president, or a prime minister. The elected members of the legislature, also have the power to remove such a president, or a prime minister, at any given time, using a vote of no confidence. In some countries, the head of state, which is the president, differs from the head of government, which is the prime minister. In some cases, the role of the president is ceremonial, such as in the case of India. Under this system, presidential ministries, known as ministers, are elected and appointed by the president, and possess different degrees of power, depending on the powers granted to them, by the president or the prime minister. The next type of democracy we will discuss is, authoritarian democracy. This is when only the elites, are a part of the parliamentary process. The individuals of the state are allowed to vote for their chosen candidate, but regular people cannot stand for elections. Therefore, in the end, it is only the ruling elites, that decide on the various interests of the population. The exact opposite of an authoritarian democracy, is a participatory form of democracy. There are different types of participatory democracy, all of them which are aimed at creating opportunities for all members of the population, to participate meaningfully, in the decision-making process. Participatory democracy empowers the disempowered, by breaking up the country into small networks, with the objective of empowering community-based grassroots politicians and governing structures. This type of democracy, relies on deliberations and discussions, rather than merely voting. There is currently no known country that practices this form of democracy. While the theories behind this type of democracy are valid, implementing this approach in real life, is challenging. However, many social movements, such as the International Occupy Movement, the Bolivar Movement in Venezuela, and the Namada Bachao and Dolan in India, organize themselves around a model of participatory democracy. The next type of democracy, 
is religious democracy. This type of democracy is where secular laws and people come together to create principles of governance. The most common example is Islamic democracy. Under Islamic democracy, politics are governed under Islamic law. The leaders of this democracy must also follow the teachings of Islam. The people, however, elect these leaders to their positions. The last type of democracy we will look into is social democracy. Social democracy has been described as the evolutionary form of democratic socialism that aims to achieve socialism gradually and peacefully through established political processes rather than through social revolution as advocated by revolutionary socialists. In this sense, social democracy is synonymous with democratic socialism and represents its original form, that of socialism, which is achieved through democratic means, usually through parliament. Social democracy aims to improve the lives of people living in a free and democratic society with a well-regulated market economy. Social democracy may further focus on providing free education or free health care so that people don't have to depend on profit-making corporations. Before we continue, on the benefits of democracy. We should remember the words of Winston Churchill, the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, who once famously said, Democracy is the worst form of government, except for all the others that have been tried. At first glance, his statement may sound negative and a bit confusing. However, it has been interpreted to mean that, with all its many faults, a democratic system appears to be the best system available to govern. Because this system requires compromise by allowing opposing sides to peacefully work through their differences. Having said that, in conclusion, democracy may not be perfect, it however aims to bring some of the benefits to most people. And these include the following. One of the first benefits of democracy is that it protects the interests of all citizens. This implies that people have an equal opportunity to vote on the most important issues affecting their country or to elect representatives to make those decisions. The other benefit of democracy is that it promotes equality. This is based on the principle that all people are equal in the eyes of the law. Democracy also prevents abuse of political power. In democracies, people in authority are usually elected by people who vote them in. They are therefore responsible for carrying out the will of those who elected them. If they misuse their position, this usually results in such people not being re-elected. Another benefit of democracy is that, it establishes rules and laws that promote stability. We've come to the end of this video on democracy. So, thank you for watching. Please take time to check out our other videos, on public administration, and public finance, under this channel, where we discuss various topics relating to public administration, public finance, public management, as well as the management of the public sector, including the running of government. Also make sure that you subscribe to our channel and remember to like this video and also to leave us a comment below this video. You can also continue the conversation by following us on social media at Consult Carno, or use the hashtag Consult Carno. Until next time, check out this video. Thank you again for watching. Carno Consultants. For professional advice, you can trust.